Gosh. <laughs> you need to find God. <laughs> I still got some love deep inside of me. Yo, what? <laughs> What all right. you say? It's like all the zesty stuff. I don't know. I forget. Okay, you just quoted the Fred Flintstones. Flintstones. I know I quoted the Flintstones. You're going Fred Flintstones zesty? Welcome back, everyone, to the Coconut Curry <laughs> Podcast. If you're new around here, we are three college students at the University of Pittsburgh just chatting about sports and hopefully offering a fresh new perspective. Please like, comment, subscribe. It helps us out a lot, even if you don't watch the full video. Um, and thank you to all the recent success on our posts. We had a YouTube short that went viral by our metrics and an Instagram post that upset many, many people. It's time um, to put the mic down, guys. Yeah. yeah. They, they, Gotta we're, give we're up. Not, we're taking we had bad. a time to put the mic down. Y'all don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Peter caught heat for being a Giants fan. We had the whole grab. We have haters. Yeah, we do. We have haters. I think we've officially made it. We well, we, I mean, you we guys have, got to me. Oh, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have any supporters before, so no. <laughs> haters are better than supporters. <laughs> exactly. Actually, shout out to the people who like the like the real. I think yes, there's more yeah. people who agree with us than uh hopefully disagree with us. But uh, disgruntled Eagles fans who will make the conversation very soon. Oh um, God. Yeah. Um, we officially gotten back for our second semester of year four of college. Yeah. Um, so this is why we're back in person over the video. Um. So you'll expect a little bit different content, but we definitely flow a little bit better when we're, yeah. we're in person like yeah. this. So speaking of those comments, we wanted to start off by going over some comments that happened. And this is mainly disgruntled Eagles fans. So if you haven't watched before, we posted a reel and YouTube short discussing how the Eagles roster hasn't changed that much. And Peter was saying that things haven't changed that much. So I don't know why they look so bad. And that's got a lot of heat. We had people pointing out the roster construction, poaching pointing out the coordinators have changed saying that that's just foolish talk the eagles have changed a lot so peter your response to these comments okay i just want to make one thing abundantly clear maybe i downplayed a little bit too much coordinators changing that's my bad because obviously losing joe gannon and um who's it shane steichen john gannon and yeah shane and shane steichen good but let me be abundantly clear these same eagles fans that are getting pissed at me in the comments, crying about how bad you guys are and about how, oh, boo-hoo, it's always us, Eagles against the world, but we suck now, so everybody needs to be fired. You are the same people that wanted Jonathan Gannon sent to Guantanamo last year after the collapse of the Ch- during the Chiefs game. Same people, all and, right? And you're 100% right because people were cheering when John Gannon was taken away to the Cardinals because they were like, thank God he's not on the Eagles. And that you was- want to know what I said? I said, this is a drastic overreaction. You should not let Jonathan Gannon go. And they were all hyped. Everybody was so happy when he left. I mean, even the entire media when John Gannon got let go was like, what are the Cardinals doing? Like, like they're so bad. So, so bad. And these like- are all the people like, well, the Eagles just can't handle the brain drain. And but according to everybody else, there wasn't a brain drain because our defensive coordinator sucks. Yeah, like we can. Okay, can Eagles fans in the comments that are going to get pissed at me anyway? Can we all? Can you all just agree on one take? Did you either want Gannon fired after the Super Bowl or not? I just need to know that because if you didn't want Gannon fired, then you can totally be mad at me. But. If you are trying to say that Gannon should have been gone and now you're whining that your coordinators aren't good, I don't know what to tell you because that's just what you get. But I mean, I think John Gannon leaving was viewed universally by Eagles fans as someone who consumes a lot of Eagles content was universally agreed that that was like a win that we had that we had succeeded and and getting rid of him. And people were really pumped about Sean Desai and people were pumped to have Matt Patricia as not defensive coordinator, but just has like a, a guy in the building an advisor like, yeah. or, or whatnot. Um, I think just there's a lot of a lot of things to go with that. Um, no one is calling for John Gannon's job at Arizona right now. He's definitely got a three year leash on him. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, I think everybody playing in the comments, this guy thing that we lost a lot of players, a little overblown. Kaiser White, TJ Edwards were players that were mentioned as if those guys were like, yeah, they're probably better than what we had, but they're not Pro Bowl level players. They're not guys who are changing the way we play football. Yeah. Um. People mentioned Javon Hargrave. Yes, but we signed one of the best defensive tackle rookies you'll probably see in a long time in Jalen. Yeah, Jalen Carter. Carter literally replaced him. Yes. Like. So, like, could you argue that Javon Hargrave is better 
than Jalen Carter right now. Yeah, one hundred percent. But but long term, you want Jalen Carter. Yes, and like the disparity in talent between those two and their production right now is not super high. Like to be like that's the reason our defense is so bad because Jalen Carter did kind of he did kind of fall off towards the end of the hundred percent. But again, he's like 21, 22 years old. Like he's gonna be fine. <laughs> yeah, and it's just not enough talent disparity for me to be like because we lost Javon Hargrave. That's, that's why, why the terrible, defense is yeah. so bad. And then people mentioned Sidney Gardner Johnson. That was a big loss for the that for was our a defense. big loss. So yeah. That was one person you really need to replace again. I don't really think you needed to like do an overhaul of the linebacker position. If you want to make an argument the defense, you can talk about the injuries. Yeah, Nicobe Dean yeah. gets injured. Zach Cunningham gets injured. Elias, our linebacker, gets injured. You can mention Darius Slay gets injured for the last four weeks. Um, you had constant guys rotating in and out due to injury. Avante Maddox didn't play for a majority of the year. Like. I think the argument for defensive injury was I think the media is not covering at all. I've heard nobody during this fort between Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless mm-hmm. and Nick Wright and all these popular. No one has talked about Darius Slay being injured during the Eagles defensive skid. Nope. It's almost evaded any conversation as if a pro bowl caliber cornerback, the guy who you want to match up one on one versus CD Lamb, and Debo Samuel and all these guys is just missing from the lineup and people are like i've never seen a defense this bad in my entire life like it's looked horrible but you're missing your top cornerback yeah with already a depleted and bad mm-hmm. secondary so yeah just one of those things where i think people are focusing too much on the subtractions which are of course like of course the defense is not as talented as last year but if they were 80 defensively talented last year in terms of rating i think maybe they're 73 now yeah, maybe like they didn't lose enough to be this bad. They were a top ten yeah. defense, I think, yeah. last year. Now they're a bottom, bottom ten defense. Yeah. That's that doesn't make it up. And the brain drain, of course. But again, as Peter said, you need to believe that Jonathan Gannon should have stayed on the team last year, and then you can say the brain drain was the reason why. But yeah. if you were at all excited about John Jonathan Gannon, if you at all slander Jonathan Gannon for the Super Bowl performance and all that type of stuff then you don't get to say that it's because we lost our coordinator. Yeah. You just don't get to say that. Yeah. Um, so well, and something else that I was also that I think people abundantly missed in my take. I was saying that while it does suck that you lost the coordinators, there is something more going on, which is what I was tr- what was the point that I was trying to get across, but people just did not hear what I was saying. Um, because the whole thing is like, look, who's the defensive coordinator? What's his name now? Yes. Matt Patricia. Well, Sean Desai, Sean technically, Desai but it's Matt Patricia's Matt calling Patricia, the plays. Yeah. Okay, look, they're terrible, all right? Don't get me wrong. I was watching some film back of the Giants game. Like, there was, like... There, Emmanuel Acho did a breakdown that made me want to vomit. It was, like, legitimately, there was three to four defenders covering two people in zone, and the Darius Slayton gets wide open. Like, that sh- just should not happen at all. But it's more about the mentality. It's the Eagles gave up partway through the season. And it's so obvious that they did. They completely gave up. I don't know why, but they just did. It's like they lost to the 49ers and then that was it. Like their season was over. Like they were shaky, but they beat the Chiefs, obviously on like a bad no call, whatever. But that was still a big win at the time. And they held them. And I know Chiefs offense hasn't been prolific this year, but that they were coming off a of bye. And yeah. they held them to twenty. They held them to fourteen points. Like, look, it's, I think that was a twenty-one fourteen game. Yeah, and it's just, I don't like. There has to be something else going on in that locker room. Like, there's more going on than just losing coordinators because losing coordinators doesn't twenty-one change. seventeen. Yeah, like losing coordinators does not change a team like that because no one has any spark. No one has any like edge to them anymore. Especially like, Matt Patricia was in. I believe he was on the team last year. Yeah, he was a advisor. Was yeah. he still an so advisor? He yeah. was around the team last year. Darius okay. Slay, Hassan Reddick, um, Josh Sweat, Brandon Graham, Fletcher yeah. Cox. These are guys who've been on. James Bradbury's been on the team for two, three years now. This isn't a situation that you don't have. Like the whole defense is overhauled. No one gets it. Like there's veterans on that team who should be able to step up and be like, "Hey, we shouldn't be doing this," or yeah. or whatnot. So it's not as simple as just coordinators are gone like i think coordinators honestly one of the worst excuses to use because of just like the injuries and again the players need to play better um there's been reports that jordan davis is super out of shape um <laughs> no which is not surely to anybody but when he's one of your defensive tackles you rely on 
Um, that's not great. Jalen Carter obviously slowed down a little bit. They can't get, they have Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, um, Josh Sweat, and they have Hassan Reddick. They can't get any sacks right now. I'm not sure they got a sack. They probably did end up getting one, but they, <laughs> Bro, it's the Giants. They definitely got a yeah, sack at some point. They, they, their pass rush didn't look prolific against a Giants team that has second all time in yeah, sacks allowed. Like, let's be like the Giants were terrible pretty much all season. They were bad. Yep. I was screaming to stop airing these games. And yet they beat the dog out of the Eagles. And I understand, okay, it was a closer game towards the end. The Giants kind of took the uh like their foot off the gas, whatever. It it was 24 nothing at halftime. Mm-hmm. With starters in. With starters. Like they could just completely gave up. Yep. And it's it just I don't know. There there's got to be something going on in this locker room. I don't I don't know if this is coming from like there, head coaching. There, I don't know. There what's was going also on. a report yeah. to come out that the Eagles were like the most miserable ten and one team ever, and someone was like, "Well, how the, like how miserable are they now?" Yeah, and it's like locker room vibes are totally a, an like, aspect of this, and this is something where like I've been critical of Jalen Hurts because for all the professionalism and all of like the cool and calm at the microphone, enough with the inspirational quotes. Like I want to see a little bit of fire. Like go mm-hmm. up to the mic. We played horribly. Like this has to be better. Um. Get fired up on the field. Yeah. Like, if you need to, if you're the franchise quarterback and you need to say, our offensive coordinator is calling bad plays, I'd say it. It's not professional, but like get something going over here. So, yeah. Or um, like when you, or when you're going off the field after like another three and out again, like get, get in the offense and start yelling yeah. at them. Like yeah. do something. Even get if them fired even, up. Even if it's not within you, even if you feel like you have to like kind of fake it a little bit, like, like just get just somebody, do, do something. Patrick Mahomes is, out here, they they won their division, and he's throwing his helmet down, Which, yelling okay, at guys. He took that a little bit too far. He was a little yeah. excessive. Yeah, yeah, he was, he was excessive. <laughs> but there's, there's yeah, a there's yeah. a helpful there's a there's a good level. There's a good there. medium. There's a good yeah. medium to that and yeah. whatnot. Uh, Raj, any comments to our Instagram and YouTube comments that were yeah. delusional? Say it louder for the people in the back. I love the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I love responding to all the comments, just trying to get you guys to say more. <laughs> keep yeah. co- keep commenting. We appreciate yeah, it. Raj Raj does love fighting his haters, so. Will, yeah, I'm sure we'll talk about the Eagles more, but that'll be it for now. Yeah. Um, moving on to disgruntled moment of the week. If you're new around here, we talk about a moment of the week that we deem disgruntled, meaning angry or dissatisfied. <laughs> I'm going to start here with Lakers fans. Because oh my God. Lakers fans are certainly disgruntled. You are 10th place in the Western <laughs> Conference. You have been three and seven That's in I'm your last better. 10 games. Shut Nobody up. knows what's going on with the team. They're talking about firing their coach. Um, Did they just fire their coach like two years ago? Yeah, yeah. their last <laughs> That's okay. LeBron's the, the coach of that. Team. Their last yeah. place in the West, their tenth place in the West, is the last spot for the play-in game. They're fighting with the Warriors, who have Draymond Green hitting folks, he, saying he was throwing... about to retire. Oh my god! So if there's anybody right now that's disgruntled, it is Lakers fans who might not make the playoffs this year, or have to play from the ten spot. Mickey Mouse to get into ring. that game. Shut so. Up, <laughs> So yeah, Lakers fans get my disgruntled moment of the week award. Rush. Uh yeah, the streets of Oakland get my disgruntled moment of the week award because Well, you are disgruntled about I'm a disgruntled yeah. about the streets of Oakland being dirty. <laughs> so you and, win the award. So okay. you yeah, yes, you win the I award. Win the award. Yeah. Actually, your car wins the award. Actually, your car wins the award. Yeah, technically. Yeah. yeah, disappointment wins the award. So, can you explain can you to explain, the audience yeah. why you're disgruntled about the Oakland streets? No. Please? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> So basically, so I come home from the gym yesterday. Everything's fine with my car. So my, whatever, I'm watching Natty. Then we move on. Then today, uh, around 9.15. I like just drank a Natty for a minute. I was, <laughs> no. Why did you have to say that? No. Oh, yeah. Also, side note, Michigan won. Yeah. Ooh, shocker. Anyways. I was going to include him on the script, and then I forgot. No, yeah, whatever. Right. Shocker. Congrats, Mish. Yeah. Cheaters. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I like get in my car at like nine fifteen, and it's a, I get like like a tire pressure warning, and I'm like, uh, that's normal. It's cold outside, yeah. and I try it's at like twenty eight. I'm like, whatever, that's normal. And then you know, I got locked out of my class today. I was ten minutes late. I was like, cool. I'm just gonna go home. <laughs> Come home. I'm like doing laundry and just getting some stuff done. And then I go. I leave at like twelve forty five for my one p.m. class. I get in my car, and the warning's still there. I'm like, whatever. I go to check it. It says seventeen now. I'm like okay i hope that's just an error so i start driving and as soon as i like get to my spot and i park i get out the car and I hear a whistling sound and i'm just sitting there like you've got to be kidding me <laughs> and i go to the back driver's side tire and i 
look in and I hear the sound and I start trying to see where it's coming from. And to my surprise, I find a nail in my tire. Lovely. And then I'm like, well, I got to go to class. I can't really, you know, day one, I'm not going to miss it. Yeah, I could have, but like I went to class, got back. I had 13. You PS- have a week one. You have to at least show up. To yeah, class. exactly. Yeah. So I had 13 PSI left in my tire and I made it over to this mom and pop shop right on like right outside my house. Yeah, I get it there. 10 PSI left. And the guy goes in and he's like, he's like, okay, oh, don't worry. It'll take 30 minutes. I'm like, oh, cool. So I'm sitting there waiting. He comes back in and he shows me, he goes, man, where were you <laughs> to get this in your tire? And it's a like three inch nail. Whoa, or, that's, that's a big nail. It is. That's a big nail. <laughs> I just want to know where that nail came from, how it got in my tire. I don't know. but So did they replace the tire or patch the tire? No, they patched it. Okay, yeah. They don't need to replace it. I was about to say, because I just got my tires replaced like six months ago. Yeah. It'd be terrible. It's also a terrible time to have your tires replaced or anything like that because oh, yeah. it's completely snowy out here. Yeah. And yeah. The yeah, city of brutal. Oakland, I mean, we can just I mean, talk about it. They, the, it's horrible. Yeah. It's like, it's I woke up this morning. Like, it's my dorm that I live in is on a hill. And so I had to go downhill to get to like the dining hall or anything. And they just didn't like, it was all slush this morning. I was like... <laughs> S- like small stepping to get down the hill because if i fall i'm just gonna you're sliding all the all way, way down the hill yeah. Slud. yeah li- no Honestly. literally well then you run into fifth traffic oh just, yeah you're gonna run into like so a that's major when you bail out right before abort <laughs> abort 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 Jacked. Uh, but i mean yeah just terrible streets um peter disgruntled moment of the week award uh goes to titans fans <laughs> oh yes dear god what what in god's green earth are the titans doing they are they went from an AFC championship game to obliterating their fran- franchise in like three years. Yep. Like three, four years. It's wild to me. Like that they, because what, it was 2019 that they went to the AFC championship game. And it was, ugh, I, I'm really at a loss for words. So they fired Mike Vrabel after two bad seasons. This dude was the entire culture of the Titans. Yep. And they didn't just part ways with him. They didn't tell him like, oh, like we're in a rebuild, whatever. They fired him. So they have to keep paying this guy. Yeah. And it's he's a he was a coach of the year like a couple of years ago. Like, I just don't I don't understand what they were thinking. Because everything good about the Titans is about to be gone. Everything good. Yep. Derrick Henry's about to leave. He's gone. He's gone. He said bye to the city. He's, yeah. he's gone. Your head coach is gone. You have Will Levis, I guess. DeAndre Hobson. Hey, hey, hey. Then Mal- Malik Willis. Don't forget. They hate him. You were right on 2019. Yeah. 2019. Hey, that's going to be the next great slot receiver. Okay. Hold up. <laughs> because DeAndre Hopkins is only going to be there for like one, two years. Then he's going to go to the Chiefs, I bet, or some stupid crap like that. And it's just like, wh- why are you nuking this team? Like, I don't get it. Like they're just and they let um Bayard go. They let him go to the Eagles yep. for nothing. You let AJ Brown go and you paid him nothing. It's like it's ridiculous. Like I and truthfully, like even I know it's a divisional game, I know you gotta do it. Even winning that game against the Jacksonville is you lost two draft spots on it. Okay, Justin, stop. <laughs> you Mike Vrabel would not tank. Well, Mike Rabel also just lost his job, and he won. The and he'll probably game. get a like, better, be in a better situation. After he's going this to the Patriots, and I'm going to be sad because they're going to well, be good again. We'll get into that. Um, Titans fans should be disgruntled again. I, I think they could have blown up the roster at the end of 2019 because I mean, like, listen, like Ryan Tannehill, yeah. Derrick Henry, not really much receiver talent. You they were, should have blown it up after that. You yeah. were you were pushing the like the limits for what that team could do, but now you kind of didn't blow it up. You got a quarterback late, kind of. You didn't start him this year. It wasn't like he was the guy yeah. all year. Ryan Tannehill, just I don't really know what the Titans' division is. And even uh, Hopkins, I was like, why do you why? guys get him? Like, yeah, are you contending? Like, I don't think anyone thought the Titans were contending no. going into the year. Um, now you're gonna have no good running back, no good receiver, no good court. Maybe an okay quarterback, a Will potential Levis, good yeah. quarterback, but not a good quarterback currently, and. Yeah, and you're losing a good coach. So I know Vrabel was kind of on the fence about wanting to stay or not. So I don't know if this is more of a, like a he got fired because he didn't. They know stay, they knew he yeah. wasn't interested in staying. But then why did you try to trade him? Yeah, exactly. Because he would like know. he he will be picked up by a team. Yeah. Um, really soon. So 
That's a good pick. Titans yeah. fans. Titans fans are in shambles. I feel so bad for them. Speaking of shambles. Oh, boy. The New Orleans Saints and Jameis Winston. I respect Jameis Winston. Oh, did. my God. I respect him. I feel like I had to address this just yeah, because J-Bo. this situation is very similar to Game Ball Gate. We discussed Game Ball Gate between the Pacers and the Bucks and how oh, the yeah. Game Ball was missing. This is another similar situation because you didn't really know what happened in the game. Then you listen to post-game press conferences, and it kind of makes it more confusing, and you just don't really know what went on. So here's what happened. The Saints intercepted the Falcons at the end of the football game, and they were on the one yard line. With and how many seconds left? With not six, a lot of time. Six or seven. Six, six, seven like six. They're up 40 to 17, I think is the score, or 41 to 17. And they line up in victory formation like they're going to take a knee, and Jamal really, Williams runs in for a touchdown. Yeah. Anyway, Arthur Smith, who just got fired, um, thank God, is pissed. And <laughs> yeah. after the game, they run into the middle, and he's like, cursing out Dennis Allen. Dennis Allen's trying to be like, hold up, bro, whatever. Anyway, after everyone's kind of like, this is weird. After the game, Jameis Winston at the mic, who's a, he's a great interview. He's so funny. So dude. funny. Is like, yep, it was a team decision. Like, we lined up, we got the call to kneel the ball, and we decided as a team, Jamal was going in. <laughs> like, I respect Jameis for that. And some reporter was like, I just want to make it clear, like, so you like made the decision. He's like, no, no, no. The team made the decision. <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay, well, do you think like it was not good to not listen to your head coach? And he's like, well, do you think it's not good to listen to the entire team? <laughs> yeah, he has a point. He he's, like, trying to spin it. he's like, are you questioning the entire team? <laughs> yeah. So, like, who's in the right? Who's in the wrong? Yeah, what do you, what do you guess, get from this situation? Well, I guess the whole, th- the whole thing is like, it's the unwritten rule of like, oh, you shouldn't run up the score when you're already winning and all of that. I am 99.9% of the time on the side of if you don't want them to score, don't let them score. 100%. Yep. But my one issue is that they, <laughs> formation, they lined up in victory <laughs> formation, which is like the big signal like, hey, guys, we're taking a knee. And a knee ends the game. It's not like the knee. Yeah. You have to do three knees and they're going to call a yeah. timeout. It's like a knee straight up ends the game. Yeah, it just it ends the game. Like, hey, guys, it's fine. We're ending the game. Versus if they lined up in like a normal formation and actually tried to get into the end zone, I don't think the Falcons would have cared at that point because they're trying to get him fired at this point. I think Arthur Smith would have been like, what the hell? But like, yeah. not like a yeah. cursing out Dennis Allen. Because the, the victory formation is my <laughs> one. It's like, Jameis, what are we doing? You know what? I respect it. And uh, you know what? I don't care. Modern day V-Day for the state of Atlanta was when Arthur Smith got fired. Yeah, that's as true. soon as midnight hit, yeah. whatever day yeah. it was. It was it was tw- uh it was Black Monday. It was 1202. Like on Black <laughs> Monday. <laughs> I just get that notification on ESPN. Arthur Smith Smith has, fired. I was like, they did not waste a single minute trying to get rid of no. this guy. That's the state of Atlanta should have thrown a parade. The state of Atlanta? Oh. <laughs> the state of Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I cannot. Wow. The state of Georgia should have had a parade for his firing. <laughs> that dude is a terrorist for what he did to that team. Yeah. We had what? He had f- three top 10 offensive players. How do you waste Drake London, Kyle Pitts, and Bijan Robinson? How do you waste them? And you well, think Desmond Ritter's the option? Well, or the solution? God. Terrorist. The, the Falcons, I think, are actually. Well, we'll talk about it in a minute, actually. But I think they're a sneaky good coaching. Uh, I thought. Oh, but, a spot for like spot, somebody. Yeah. That, oh hell yeah. 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 Um, as for Jameis Winston, um, I think this is a referendum on Dennis Allen. When, oh yeah. You, like, how do you not have control? Like he team? should be fine. I know they kind of like insured his coaching spot for next yeah. year before the game, but he should absolutely be fired. Like, yeah. You clearly don't have the respect of your players. I and I can name twenty coaches in the league. That they said take a knee, you're taking a knee. Or I don't know if they had timeouts. The Saints should have called a timeout and been like, uh, "Do we want to try to get Dennis?" Him in? Yeah. Listen, Jamal needs wants a touchdown. I don't know if he's had one all year. Like, can we just get him in the end zone? Yeah. Um, this idea that your players just went rogue yeah. and <laughs> out of victory formation just went ran for, off, ran, ran off, ran off the the score, not in a tight game in a. 30 23 point blowout like that it, the saints had already been eliminated from the playoffs yes yeah it, nothing mattered yeah and <laughs> so i don't think Jameis made a right decision uh somebody Stephen a smith went out and called for him to be cut from the team uh you shouldn't ever do that because as we've noted throughout this whole entire season backup quarterback is one of the most valuable positions on yeah. a team right now and Jameis winston is 
okay at being a backup quarterback. He is so entertaining to watch because you never know what's going to happen. Yep. You're and either seeing a touchdown or a pick, no in between. Well, <laughs> and, it, and at least gives you a chance to win. Some of these other backup, like yeah. Easton Stick, doesn't give you a chance to win the game. <laughs> Poor guy. Um, not to take shots, but hey, he give you a AOC shot. AOC gives you a chance to win. Daniel <laughs> O'Connell. Oh okay. God. Um, but yeah, he gives you a shot to win, Jameis. So I would not cut him. I would just fire Dennis Allen. Um, because again, if Jameis is saying what it, what Jameis is saying is that the whole team agreed. I believe it because Jimmy Graham tweeted like what like something, and he said "f the Falcons" at the end of his tweet. Yeah. So. Um, I think that the whole team did agree but on it. But I think it's the whole team besides Dennis Allen. Yes, and that's the problem. <laughs> and again, I don't think victory formations or he, I think if Jameis wants to go back in time, they probably should have like gone into a spread or something and then tried yeah, to like. But, yeah, but, yeah. but also, I think Dennis Allen would have just been like, no, 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 yeah, time out. Yeah, time out. What are you doing? So yeah. uh, that's the drama. I thought it was super funny listening to the press. Absolutely conference. hilarious. Jameis. I think you were like an idiot for doing that, but keep it up. It's so funny. It's, I love it's, it. It's great. And Please great, keep doing crap like in that. In a great way for the Saints to stay relevant when they miss the playoffs. Oh, my God. So good. Um, and we, we touched on it earlier. Coaching changes. Just going through them real quick. Arthur Smith out of Atlanta. Mike Rayburn out of Tennessee. Ron Rivera out of Washington. Mm-hmm. And then those are the three that are fired, to my opinion. So far. And then Carolina needs a new coach because they're working on an interim. Yep. Las Vegas needs a new coach because they're working on an interim. Mm-hmm. The Chargers need a new coach because they're working on an interim. And then... We have the Bill Belichick drama. I think that's everything. Yeah, so but far. Speaking of the well, Bill Belichick. Well, and Bell- then uh, Wink Martindale resigned from the Giants position. He did? Yeah. Oh, oh, they were going to keep him on board. Yeah. He's going for, like, what is he going for? I have no idea. Okay. Retirement? He's, he's probably going either for head coach or retirement. Yeah. He seems old, so. Yeah, he is kind of old. But he was coaching that defense. I, well. I love Wink, but I think his defense kind of has a bit of a ceiling. Yeah. Um, because, like, he blitzes really heavy, and, like, it, it, that can be really good. But the issue is that he doesn't really you know, make his outside linebackers good or like edge rushers. <laughs> and just like, no I, position is good. It's, just, just, it's kind of just like everybody's sort of like the same player. And it's like, it's, you know, that's a really good strategy, but then it's like you get an offense that could beat that. And it's like, oh, oh no, uh, 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 <laughs> we're screwed. You know, he made it work with Kayvon Thibodeau and Dory Jackson. So respect. Yeah. Um, so talking about the Bill Belichick drama, pretty much what happened is he met with Robert Kraft. Apparently he's open to the idea of not being the GM and he's kind of like, I'm not stepping down. So he's kind of either <laughs> going to get what he wants, or You're, he's either getting traded or fired. He's, Belichick got some dirt. Oh, okay, dirt so on I was going to say, I, I do think a reasonable option is if, if they get a general manager, he might stay if he's really. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm but, saying like for him to leave, he's getting yeah. fired. And or this is where I wanted to address this. If anybody actually thinks that getting Mike Vrabel and trading him for Bill Belichick or replacing him. That's such a lateral move. Yeah. I like I've never seen like the idea you're going to replace a defensive minded head coach in Bill Belichick with a defensive with mind. his former player, similar style like practice hard, yeah. um, tough on like, players. Vrabel's just the modern Belichick. Yes, yeah. and to the yeah, not him, trying to compare like goat wise. I'm saying like similar style. When historically, since Tom Brady left, your offense can't do a darn thing. Yeah, like if you're replacing Bill Belichick, it needs to be with an offensive minded, some dude or young guy like D'Amico Ryan, who's going to come in and develop yeah. a quarterback to play that position in an offense. Not getting Mike, who's just going to do be Bill Belichick, but maybe a little bit more open to like some to the general manager yeah, and not like, picking. So I think like the Patriots should roll with Bill unless there's another option that becomes really available. And this is something that I was going to talk about as well. Next, people are calling for Nick Sirianni's job. <laughs> who out there is better? And that's going to be a question around the entire league for people who hey, want to be fired. Let's remember that when they fire him and you're crying that they don't have a good head coach. I want to remember that. No, no. We're getting John Harbaugh because we can have a whole discussion on who should be fired, who should not be fired. But you mean Jim, Jim, Jim. Nah, what's the difference? <laughs> Whatever. It's a tough look. Um, oh, well. There always needs to be the caveat if you fire your head coach, who's better? So if you fire Bill Belichick, who are you getting that's out there on the market? Matt Patricia. You're not getting Jim Harbaugh. Did you just say Matt Patricia? Yes, I did. <laughs> Detroit Lions fans just had a heart attack. Okay. Yes. That man was a terrorist in Detroit. Yup. <laughs> so if Bill gets fired, which he might, you've got you've only got like this handful of options that could be better, but they're not guaranteed to be better. So if I was Robert Kraft and Bill, and I don't know what Bill's head's at, I'd be like, listen. GM comes in, he's picking, they're picking the players, and you can have some input on on players, whatnot. And then also, you need to get an offensive coordinator and let Brian him continue. Johnson. Like the Patriots' defense 
was actually pretty good for the second half of the season. Mm-hmm. Like weight played way above like their caliber. That's with Christian Gonzalez out who looked really good. He was Matthew Judon got injured in the yeah. middle of the year. Like they were playing good yeah. defense. He can still coach a good defense. Yeah. Um, like Christian Gonzalez literally looked like the rookie, of the, uh, the defensive rookie of the year yep. for when he was playing. And uh, JC Jackson's back there. So. He's been kind of okay. Yeah, He's been yeah. fine. And when yeah. you have a, yeah, Rogers, true. And you're in a division with Aaron Rodgers, Garrett Wilson, Stefan Diggs, Josh Allen, Tua, Tyreek, Jalen Wallach. This is not the time to this just is like an get rid of, yeah, yeah, this is not the time to just like be a little different. Yeah. Stay with Dick defense. We're going to be a defensive team and we're going to, we're going to win through that way and then yeah. try to go get somebody who's from the Shanahan system to spice your offense up a little bit. Really, that's what you got to kind of do. Yeah. And then try that way. That would be my advice. But um, again, if the page, like the question needs to be, stop being like, everybody needs to stop saying, fire everyone. Fire everyone. Because you need to fill it up with the replacement. So this is my thing with Sirianni. Yeah. If, say the Eagles lose to Tampa. I wouldn't fire, I would not fire Sirianni no matter what happens this year. But if you want to say, we're going to replace Sirianni with Bill Belichick. Um, no problems. I'll let it happen. I wouldn't agree with the decision because I would just keep him no matter what Sirianni, but I'd say, okay, like I'll totally move on to a better head coach. If you want to say fire Nick Sirianni and get Mike Vabral, I'm here. I'm here for it. Like I'll get not going to necessarily agree, but I'll go for it. But if it's not those two people who are you placing, replacing Nick Sirianni with who, you know, is going to be better. And that's my question for all the head coach. Like everybody who says this person should be fired. This person fired. It's the same thing with the quarterback situation. Like, Who's who's better? Yeah, you're like Jalen play Mariota. Yeah, literally, and it's part of the debate we have with uh, like picking quarterbacks in the draft. Like, just disgruntled. Yeah. Fans. is that person going to be better? Like, if, if we get Caleb Williams, is that better than Justin Fields? Who knows? Yeah. Um, but for the coaching mindset, that's there. So that's just my whole thought in the coaching situation. Yeah, that's that's yes, that is the take because it's just ridiculous when people are like fire this guy and it's like okay, well then I have both my coordinators who have left. And my head coach who has left, and this is the Eagles. So now we need a new offensive coordinator, a new defensive coordinator, and a new head a coach. new head coach. And the whole, like you're the in team. a full rebuild at that point. Frank Reich, yeah, Frank from Peterson, the coaching from the coaching Jimmy standpoint. Jones. And then you're gonna have Lane Johnson and Kelsey leave soon. So then you're really like, I think Kelsey's done after yeah. this year. I, I think, think he might be too. Back. So like at that point, like I, it's just not worth all the coaching this changes. Was our so. window. Yep. We'll get to the Eagles later. Um, <laughs> and we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about the Eagles Giants game because what really There's matters is to really what they about. do in the playoffs. Yeah. 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 Um, so, zero and zero. When someone knocks you down, you got to get right back up 10 times stronger. Shut up, Jalen. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to discuss two games that happened this past weekend. We usually discuss the whole slate, but a lot of them didn't matter. Yeah. Didn't a lot of mattering. them. Teams were already out of the playoffs. Yeah. So, like, it didn't really matter. The first one I wanted to discuss was the banger on Saturday night Texans versus Colts. That was an that was amazing crazy. game. Oh, my God. I cannot believe the AFC South looks that good. Like, they are, yeah. I mean, so bad. Tennessee yeah. wasn't a pushover team this year. They, they weren't great, but no, they, they weren't still great, had some like, like big victories against Miami, mm-hmm. and they beat Jacksonville in the last game of the season. Um, and it's just quite a log jam. It was almost like old NFC North, yes. AFC North type yes. energy yeah, where yeah, yeah. all these teams are stacked against each other. And I love the the week seventeen, week, week eighteen, yeah, week eighteen, 18 yep. winner go home game style. And I mean the the game delivered both defenses oh, played yeah. a yeah. perfect 23 19 is a great like defensive and offensive game yeah. like, it's not boring it's not like oh yeah. they're playing no defense mm-hmm. just a fantastic game to watch on saturday night yeah i mean cj stroud's him like yeah period like this dude is that quarterback competency test really <laughs> yeah i saw i saw everybody saying now that um they got a Every GM in the draft is now looking for the stupidest quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right, who scores the lowest on this? I think Stroud just didn't want to go to the Panthers. Yeah, I mean, that if he really tanked his score to not go to the Panthers and ended up there, I think all of Houston is going to be so happy for that. But uh, but let's not forget that the reason why Houston ended up with CJ Stroud instead of Bryce Young was because they didn't tank the last game of the year, yep. the year prior, yep. and the football gods smiled upon them and said, you know what? We're going to give you your dude for that. So Davis Mills and whoever their coach was at the time. Lovey Smith. Lovey Smith, Smith, yeah. Lovey Smith. Set it up. They, Everybody in Houston should be thanking Lovey Smith so much for sending that Hail Mary. But, and, um, they, and they've just been great in the draft. Like Nico Collins. Um, I know Tank Dell's not playing right now. Will but Anderson has been really good too. Like, I mean, I'll give Stingley's been solid. I mean, we it's can give so much credit to the Texans organization. They lost to Sean Watson and like 
this whole entire disaster. And they just went full rebuild and they turned it around. For for a short period of time. It's not yeah. long ago that they were like they were like the broadcast like they're making the playoffs for the first time since 2019. 2019 ain't that it's long ago. Far. There's a lot bigger droughts. And they turned <laughs> it around completely. They have like op like they have options all over. Like they have two rookie receivers who are just gonna get better. Mm-hmm. A rookie quarterback who's just gonna get better. Yeah. A solid offensive line, a first year head coach, mm-hmm. and young defense. I love that they just said last draft. Will Anderson, he's our guy. We're going to trade this year's first round yeah. pick to just go get him. Screw it. Because we think he's probably a better we need player. We a defensive than... anchor. We need a young guy to pair alongside of CJ Stroud. And we're not waiting yeah. a year to no. see if someone could be better. Yeah, because it's like we're never going to be in this position again. And yeah. they did it and they pulled it off great yeah. because mm-hmm. their pick is above 18 this year. Yeah. yeah. So they they that was a really, really, really good trade for them. Um, cause yeah, they got two young guys to anchor their offense and their defense to really lead the, like lead those guys. They're only going to be getting better. They had really solid. I mean, CJ Stroud really just turned that offense around completely. So they essentially, there's some wiggle room around there, but they traded Will Anderson for, for Will Anderson. They traded their first this year. That's a 22nd pick. Will Anderson in this draft right now would never fall close. Would to never that. fall close to that. Yeah. He's probably a top five player in this class. Yeah. I'm I'm trying to think about who else. I don't even know who else. Well, Drake, it's, Drake it's, May, Williams, Marvin Harrison. Oh, oh, you're saying yeah, this, yeah, yeah, this yeah. class. I'm saying if Will yeah, Anderson yeah, yeah. stayed in. If Will game. Anderson came out this, actually, yeah, he's a really good. Yeah, he might. He's not falling outside of the top ten. I can promise you that. Oh, no, and no, 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 no. So it's just it's a fantastic trade. Yeah, it and that really just becomes was. that's like smart people in uh, your front office and D'Amico mm-hmm. Ryan's and yeah, it makes yeah. me really happy seeing Houston be good. It's because yep. really rootable players. Oh, they're because they're all really likable. Like CJ Stroud is so humble. Like. Everybody counted him out and said, like, oh, he's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's doing. Like, oh, he's going to be a bust. He's another Ohio State quarterback. I am quarterback. those people. <laughs> Rosh was those people. <laughs> that but, was really big of you to admit that. that was, yeah, that was really big of you. I can admit when I'm wrong sometimes. Uh, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's like they're very young team. Like, super, super, like, awesome. Also, uh, D'Amico Ryan's just, like, seems like just such a great locker room guy. And the fact that he was, like, he was, like, the captain on – the Houston Texans then comes back, coaches, leads them to the playoffs in his first year. Like, it's awesome. Sucks for the Colts. Want to make that very clear. Sucks that we didn't get to see Anthony Richardson versus CJ Stroud yeah. shoot out at the end. Um, you know, drop pass right there. I mean, it's absolutely brutal. It's heartbreaking. But again, like it, you had opportunities that shouldn't have come down to that. Um, I think that's what to the people that are sending death threats to an NFL player for dropping a pass. Get a life for the love of God. Like, who are you? It's really not that deep. Like, dude, it's a game. Can you calm down? You and guys, uh, first off, Colts, you guys were not going to make it this far anyways. I know. And it's it's awesome that they even, the fact that they were even close to making the playoffs really says something about how much potential the Colts have. Yeah. Like, they have a lot of potential going into next year. Like, the, if they draft some weapons around, uh, a, a, they need to draft some <laughs> some offensive linemen to help out <laughs> Anthony Richardson. They get, him a, they get him a receiver. They got Jonathan Taylor. The defense is solid. They add some guys there. Like, they're going to be very, very solid. But for the love of God, stop sending death threats to NFL players. You absolutely It's not that deep. Okay, yeah. please. All right. Sorry. I need to get off my high horse. All right. I just wanted to. I looked it up real quick. Um, the Colts had the 17th best odds to make the playoffs this year based on current projections. They had a. They were marked at a 20% chance to make the playoffs before the year started. Dang. And they finished and they were in a win. They were I mean, that's not as bad. Short, as yeah. The Texans were, I think, lower than that. I'm Texans not even were bottom. Basically. But the, the Colts were one game away from winning the division. Yeah. Because the Jags lost. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like so they were the, right the, in it. Yeah. The pre- preseason projection was, I think, uh, they were 20% chance to make the playoffs to start the year. Yeah. And they, they did miss the playoffs, to be fair. But they were they were that close to doing it. So, yeah. Um, a lot of potential for Colts. You'll be you'll be fine. Yep. And I mean Shane Steichen. Like, listen. I mean, that's, yep. he's made himself one of the best coaches in the league. Yeah. From what yeah. he did this year. And the uh, part that drives me nuts is how everyone's like, "Why'd you take Jonathan Taylor out of the game?" It's the right call. He yeah. was wide open. Yep. Like the the dude was wide open. Yeah. It like, been a should have been a catch. Should have been a better. You pass. have you have oh, no yeah. idea. You have no idea if Jonathan Taylor gets out of the um out of the flat that out to the flat that quick. Or no they idea just, if they don't put a guy they just on throw him. a spy on him. Yeah. Yep. Like you just have no idea. Like so, yeah. I don't know. It was the right play call. It worked. Gar- Gardner Minshew didn't make a perfect throw, and and it, the guy didn't make a good ca- didn't make a good catch. That's that's football. Yep. It's sometimes it happens. Like uh, yep. And this is again the value of having a good backup quarterback. 
Yeah. Shane Sykin knew Gardner from his year at yeah. in Philadelphia, brought him over to Indy, and Gardner Minshew almost brought this team to a playoffs. Now he's not going to be as good as Richardson. Yeah. Um, so we're looking forward to having Richardson back for the next year. But yeah, great season for the Hopefully Colts. Hopefully he'll learn to stop, you know, trying to get concussed. Yeah, please. Anthony, <laughs> for the love of God, you you're you are so good at the football field and so much fun to watch. Please slide. <laughs> I get it. You're huge. Just slide. Yeah. Save yourself. <laughs> and for Jonathan Taylor, good for you. Good like, for you. Started the year off with all the drama about the team. And in the final game of the season, winner go home, you have 188 yards, yeah. 30 carries, and a touchdown. touchdown like, dominated. You were the offense. Yeah. And you won a lot of teams their fantasy championship. Yeah. So, not yeah, you, though. That was a great game on Saturday. No. Um, we can talk about that. <laughs> that. That should have been my disgruntled moment. Of the week. Actually, we'll just cover it right here. I lost, I lost the fantasy championship to Peter in our one league because AJ Brown got hurt. <laughs> like, I lost Jaylen by two hurts. points. And it was because AJ Brown got hurt. And I think I have Jalen Hurts in that league. Yeah. And Jalen well, Hurts. Well, to be fair, you would have lost by a lot more if I didn't tell Peter to bench his guys. Yeah. 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 Up. But I think <laughs> so brutal. I, I think even if Peter played his guys, though, and Jalen Hurts and AJ Brown had decent games. Yeah. Like, Negative negative point six was Jalen's total. No, 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 that was that um, was AJ's. AJ's and, and Jalen was like three. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was ridiculous the way to lose. But anyway, next game, Bills Miami. That was, honestly, I didn't enjoy the, watching the game. It wasn't. It was kind of boring. It was kind of boring. There was a lot of pun- there was a lot of punts. There was a lot of arm punts. Yeah, yep. there was. <laughs> there was a classic vintage to a moment. There was a vintage to a moment. moment. Yep. Like it oh, was also a vintage Josh Allen moment where well, he rolls out the pocket. Yeah, someone's down there. Yeah, I feel like though yeah. this game was what both teams were. Like I feel like I got what the teams. You were. got the floor of both teams. Yes, yes, and this showed me about like Miami can't beat winning teams. No, nope. they've shown it all year, and they had a winner go home at home. They couldn't do it. And and Josh what, Allen showed and, us. And Josh, Josh Allen. Josh Allen show Josh Allen for all this throws, but three was fantastic. Yeah, and but he made. Well, two two throws, one fumble. Yeah. And besides, and then those three plays, he was horrible. Yeah. And this is what the Bills should have easily blown Miami out. They, oh, yeah. They, three possessions that were in the end zone. He fourth and two had guy in the flat missed. It. Everyone talks about the interception. That was a punt at that point. <laughs> but he had a guy open in the flat. He probably could have run for the first down as well. Like that was bad decision making. I'm not ma- caring about the interception, but he had the opportunity there. He just threw an interception in the red zone. That was three points. And then he fumbled the ball in the red zone in yeah. field range. That's nine points at a bare minimum. That's yeah. a 30 to 14 score. Yeah, if you get a- one touchdown, yeah. you're at 34. Yeah. And this game would have been considered a blowout. And it's what they did in Miami the last time. So I'm out on Miami completely. Oh, yeah. My, well, because I think Miami's defense is just cooked with the injuries. Yeah. But like, that's, their defense is cooked. What about their offense? <sighs> we all know Tua is a Tyreek merchant. Yeah, I mean, they chains regressed badly. Well, I th- it's their offensive line just is not what it used to. Like, I don't know what they were doing early on, but I think teams have just kind of figured it out. Mm-hmm. Um, and the issue is like they they are built for speed, and if they can't get those like uh, yards after catch, they can't get these guys on like a one cut and go. Like, they're not a ground and pound type of team. They're not like a quick like. Um, like matriculate down the field yeah. where it's like you get like you know five yards four yards three yards eight yards you get a lot of chunk like, plays a lot of chunk plays like stuff like that like they're not built for that they're built for the home run ball and the second that they don't have that they just kind of fall apart oh, so Tyreek was looking like Kadarius Tony out there dropping a lot yeah, of passes yeah I mean it, maybe because his house just got burned down but yeah there's a little there's a lot of drama so yeah. whatever he's Tyreek going back to the Chiefs yeah. well yeah. he's he is going back to Kansas City well yeah against them yeah and Screams. give a lot of credit to the Bills they had a lot of things going for them season Stefan Diggs drama Sean McDermott uh his comments bye bye, How bye, bye, bye Ken Dorsey yeah firing yeah. Ken Dorsey yeah. bringing in Joe Brady um Josh Allen's of course on his roller coaster they lose the first game of the year against the Jets who had lost Aaron Rodgers in the yeah. first drive of the game like all this type of stuff near the two seed yeah yeah like that's like it, after all that crap yep you're the two seed and that's all that's all that matters at the end of the day yeah. you won the biggest they got home field advantage they they did, and that's like that's Bills huge mafia. It could go through Buffalo. Yeah. So, um, big credit to them. Uh, Miami. The uh, we'll see. We'll see here all the predictions with the playoffs. Um, frauds. We'll see what happens with the playoffs. I think I know what everyone's going to pick. Uh, Mike McDaniel obviously should not be fired. No, he should oh have. Oh my god! No, but he should have to. 
face serious questions about the way the offense is being run. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. the offense cannot play against good teams. When they had the receiver and running back talent, um, some of it's quarterback. Tua is clearly not dynamic. He might be really good in the He's a system, very, very good pocket passer. But he's not. Josh Allen was dynamic yep. in that Bills game. Tua was not, and I think that kind of decided the game at the yeah. end of the day, even despite Josh's like horrible mistakes. Which yeah. I love that Sean McDermott at halftime when like usually people run like the halftime interview before they run off in the tunnels, like a uh, oh yep, we'll talk to the team to make some adjustments and we'll yeah. be good. He was like, Well, you know, we'd be up by a lot more if Josh just like held onto the ball pretty <laughs> yeah. much. Yeah. I was like, Good for you, Sean. Like yeah. just call him out. Yeah, was, exactly. Was, well, because I mean, Josh Allen, he is just a gunslinger. Like, that's just who he is. Yeah. Like you're you're not gonna get like the Aaron Rodgers where it's like he has like a sixty percent completion percentage and like a five to one touchdown to interception ratio. Like you're just not getting that. You're getting a two to one interception nope. ratio and you're gonna like it because he's gonna put up fifty touchdowns. The first interception was ridiculous. He didn't even look at the guy when he threw it. No, he just ho- hoisted that. Yeah. Uh, the second one, I didn't really care about it that much. As many other people are complaining about it. It was fourth and two. Like. Whatever. It would have either been turnover. They got. They actually gave him better field position by like punting the ball. Yeah. Um. He missed players, which is what I was mad about. That it was mad about the decision, not the that it was not, picked. Not to the flat, but like, yeah. Not that it was picked. And then the fumble was like he was just so loose with the ball when he was getting tackled. Yeah. He really need to cover that up, especially when you're in field goal range in a tight game. So yeah. Anyway, any Whatever. thoughts on those games? Uh, <laughs> nah. Week 18's over. Time for the playoffs. Good job by the NFL for scheduling those games because those are pretty solid games. To have yeah. two like big games like that mm-hmm. in the in at night were was awesome. Um, moving on, we're gonna predict the NFL playoffs. So the way this is gonna work is we're gonna pick the entire playoffs, pick our winner, and everything like that. That being said, we can change our picks if things happen that are on our bracket. So for example, if I said the Packers were gonna win the Super Bowl and they lost to Dallas, you can come on the podcast next week and say, hey, I've actually changed my pick because obviously the Packers have been eliminated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we're still going to go by our initial like. Yes, it's still we're still going to call it, but then we'll end up changing we'll, it just based we'll make on, some more yeah. projections. But I'm not going to come back next week and be like, well, I'm not going to say well, any, more predictions, any more predictions because I'm wrong. Because my guy is out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we'll start with Wild Card Weekend, of course, coming up. Um, the schedule actually for Wild Card Weekend is very interesting. Yes, um, a lot of script going. Oh on. my god, the, those writers were. Co- it's so obvious that the writer strike ended because the NFL <laughs> is good at it. It's right. so obvious. Yes. All right. First game Saturday at four thirty p.m. We have the Browns and the Texans. I am all over, hundred percent. I don't think this game is actually going to be close. The Browns. Yeah. I saw the Browns minus one and a half, and I'm twenty one betting in the state of Pennsylvania. I threw more money than I usually do <laughs> on the Browns covering minus one and a half because I, I think this oh, they damn. first of all the Browns played the Texans not long ago and beat the crap out of them. That was with CJ Stroud. Yeah. I think CJ Stroud's due for a rookie quarterback kind of trouble. Um the Browns, the Browns play a lot of so Browns play a lot of man coverage. Mm-hmm. On guys, they kind of just line up. And, and Tank play. Dell's going to be out, so like it's going to be Nico Collins. The Browns are off out. rest. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. Oh God. So I think this game could get ugly real fast. I love the Browns. I I want the Texans to win because I like CJ Stroud, but I believe the Browns will win, and that gives us an opportunity for a Joe Flacco revenge game yes. against Baltimore, which would be insanity. Yeah. But yeah, I think the Browns win. I think their defense is just really suffocating. Of course, if there was a team that could randomly pop off and just blow the doors off of the Browns out of nowhere, could be the Texans. And so that's why I'm riding with the Stroud boys. You're riding with the Stroud boys. I like uh, it. Nice. I like it. I, I like. I like. The, I mean, I think the Texans could win this game. I yeah. think if they get really creative and try to do a lot of goofy stuff yeah. and try to catch the Browns off guard, maybe mm-hmm. Joe Flacco kind of. His shoulders start getting a little bit sore and a little bit stiff <laughs> during if, the break. If, if Will funny. Anderson and the Houston defense is able to get home to Joe Flacco, yeah. I think that changes the dynamic of this game. Like, 100%, seriously. 100%. Um, and we'll see how the offense adjusts. I think that Brown's defense could really tee off on like Miles Garrett mm-hmm. yeah. and whatnot. But we'll see. I think if Derek Stingley can kind of lock down Amari Cooper a little bit, yeah. um, you could you could be in for a game. But Of course, I, we're going to say that, but Amari Cooper is going to absolutely right? saw yeah. Stingley. I... I'm going to say that I might even put an alternate bet on there. I think the Browns could win by more than a touchdown. Dang. Okay. Okay. Um, I just think they're the better football team. I mean, yeah. they, I think mm-hmm. they're just more experienced. I yeah. Think. Like just, and yeah. 
I mean, Joe needs to throw less interceptions. He's been the, <laughs> he's a his, gunslinger. He like he needs to be a little less gunslinger yeah. in this game. Like, I think you can handle the Texans if you don't turn the ball over. But if you start giving them good field position, start yeah. letting them flow a little bit, the team gets really hyped with their bunch of yeah. young guys. Yeah. Like, let's go, we're here. So yeah. it's exciting though. I mean, they're going to be Browns are going to be playing on the road. So yeah. I really love the Saturday four thirty game. Yeah. Um, next game is Saturday night. Dolphins Chiefs Chiefs um, Chiefs. It's not going to be pretty, but it's going to be just the because I want to fade the Chiefs. Dolphins. <laughs> the only reason why I just want to fade the Chiefs. Dog. Chris, I know I'm going to have to change my this bracket. Is official, after this is an official bracket. That's fine. Okay. I just want. I'm going to have right. to fade the yeah, Chiefs. I I think the Chiefs defense has been playing pretty like very well. Um, they dropped off a little bit, but they they're still playing very solid. And I think that with the starters resting, with Andy Reid being able to really kind of dial it in mm-hmm. for this game, I think I don't think the Chiefs go far in the playoffs. I think they beat the Dolphins, though. I just want to see Tyreek torch the Chiefs. That'd be that's, hilarious. That's the only they, reason why. Again, it, I mean, the, the trouble happened. with that is just the Chiefs have two really good secondary players in Trent McDuffie and uh, Sneed. Yeah. Well, so, not according to uh, Jamar Chase, even yeah, though he yeah. locked up, but whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I mean, Tyreek's going to have a hard day. I just... Chris Jones, it's going to be like negative nine real feel in Kansas City that week because they're going to have mm-hmm. no run game too because the um, uh, Dane Belton, no, that's Giants guy, um, Bolton from yep. uh, Kansas City, he's back. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, he's like their younger Which linebacker. Nick Bolton is really good. Nick Bolton, and, that's what his name and, is. And I mean, to, for him to be have missed as much time, the Chiefs defense still be great. It's awesome. Yeah. Nick Wright says, I'm not going to take credit for it, but he said, if the Dolphins don't want to tackle people in 60 degree weather in Miami, they're not going to want to tackle Isaac Pacheco. Isaiah Pacheco is going to. Chill. Oh my God. I didn't even think about that. And oh this my is God. with the Dolphins who don't have. Um, Cause he's a Jersey kid. Too. They don't have Jaden. Oh God. They don't, have, they don't have Phillips. They don't have uh Chubb. This dude's going to be a demon. So I, I think the Dolphins are really going to struggle. I don't even think the Chiefs are going to probably throw the ball much. I think they're going to run the ball a lot. I think they're going to pound the rock. Yeah. Yeah. And just really try to just get out of the game without throwing the ball much. And yeah, I mean, the receivers could still sell the game. I think it, it's probably a low scoring game like Chiefs. Yeah, I think it's an ugly game, but I think the Chiefs yeah. win it pretty handily. Yeah, I, I don't. I think it'll be a lot like the uh, game that happened in Germany where like the Chiefs were winning for a majority of the game and they got a little bit close at the end, but. You're going with the Dolphins. Oh, right. Because Raja's phone needs to be charged because his phone is never charged ever. Yeah, yeah. I'm riding with the Dolphins. <laughs> Whatever. And you like, are you just fading all of ours? No, no. Not, okay. That's I, guess, not I guess we'll see. We'll see. I just don't. Well, let's we'll really one. see here. Uh, Sunday, one o'clock. It's a game that nobody, I think, really wants to actually watch is the Bills Steelers game. And I'm riding with the Bills. Let's yeah. Be real. <laughs> I. I think this could be a really ugly game. For oh the Bills. yeah! I think oh, I, I think it might be. Ugly. We're gonna see the Bills floor, but this actually the Steelers um, like is nowhere close to the Bills floor. I I could see it being close early because Josh Allen just throws some stupid ass picks yeah. or whatever. But then I think eventually they just pull away exactly. because like I, I think this could be a well. I don't know what the line is. I can try to look it up because what T.J. Watts out there. Yes. Mason Rudolph is the starting quarterback. I think. Yes, I think that's confirmed too. Because like what? It's gonna come down to a shootout essentially. Yeah, the Steelers are not out are not gonna be able to keep up with the Bills. No, like, I, I I like the Bills in this spot. I bet the, Pickens yeah. pulls out the Tech Nine. All right, the, li- <laughs> the line is Buffalo minus ten. Um, I just don't think the Steelers have a shot. The no. Bills are five and one against playoff teams this year. The one yeah. losses to the Eagles, who and that was an overtime field goal or no over the, overtime yeah, yeah, yeah. sixty one yard Jake Elliott in the yeah. rain field goal. In overtime in Philadelphia, yeah, I think they handle the, the Steelers. Yeah, um, I think it would be hilarious if the Steelers won, but they won't. I think a Colts matchup here would have been a lot more interesting, probably. Um, but, but alas, alas, we have the Steelers. Um, it's a ten point spread. It's a ten point. Yeah, that's I just said that. Oh, sorry, I, I was looking at the other bets. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> um, Packers Cowboys. God, for, I hope the Packers win this game so I, bad. For any media personality who's trying to make you convince that the Packers have a shot in this no. game is crazy. No, 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 no. The Cowboys are going to win. They're going to roll. This Joe is Barry is going to put up a disaster class. They're, they're going to put their edge rusher on <laughs> CD Lamb again. <laughs> and CD Lamb is going to have 500 yards receiving. This is a seven and a half point line. I think the only trouble here is that Dallas sometimes in the playoffs tends to fold a little bit, so like it could be a little bit closer. Could, dude, if if Dallas loses to the Packers, 
Oh my god, it'd be so funny. Oh my god, that would feed families. I'm salivating. <laughs> the about NFL it. memes would be oh, they'd be so good. See, I just want to be right, but I mean, I want the Packers to win this game, but I have the Cowboys. Yeah, winning. it's the Cowboys are gonna win. Like I, as much as I want to see it, Cowboys are winning the game. Yeah, yeah and I just don't think it's a, a spot here where they have much of a shot. Again, I can see this game being something like the Commanders game this weekend, where like seven seven, it's fourteen like, ten. You're yeah. like, oh, they're in maybe and they and kind of just like pull away late. Yeah. Um, Next game is Rams Lions. Matt Stafford returning to Detroit. It's the upset a lot of people are going to pick, but I've been saying it for a while. I said it like four or five weeks ago when they wasn't even like yeah. a confirmed the, playoff thing. You don't I don't want to play the Rams. Yeah. I don't. They don't think they want to play the Rams. I think the Rams win this game. Um, I watched that secondary who were playing all their guys get toasted by Jordan Addison and uh, Justin Jefferson. and Justin Jefferson mm-hmm. last week. Uh, Try Puka Nakua and Co- Cooper Cup. Cup yeah. Uh, when they have rested and hey, don't Stafford, forget about Tutu Atwell. Oh, I didn't, sorry. I didn't sorry. want to forget him. I didn't want to. Um, sorry. I wasn't familiar with your game. I yeah. think CJ Gardner Johnson might be back. I don't know. I he, forget his injury. He legitimately might be back. For but even game. like the rust. Yeah, true. But that's my whole thing. It's like, that could be the one X factor for that Detroit defense. Yeah. But if he's like not back at literally 100% playing in his like, superstar slot corner safety fashion then they're it's gonna be really really awkward if matt stafford beats the lions in detroit i think it's gonna be a shootout i think it might be a shootout too because like the defense they're both defenses are okay their offenses are pretty high powered so it's just like I think this might be game of the weekend i'm not oh, gonna lie 151 and a half I mean, they have the best 51 and a half Holy crap! Yeah, Cowboys pack is fifty and a half. What is that? Twenty seven, twenty five. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I think. I think Rams will. One. I think Rams will win. I just think their their quarterback, who's been playing really well, and their receivers are going to get to Detroit. I think they'll be able to do enough defensively. I Lions really haven't played their best football mm-hmm. at the end of the year. They've been yeah, doing, they kind of slowed down a little bit. Yeah, they just, they've had some tight games. Um, by no means do I think the Lions can't win this game. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. I think a lot, since a lot of people are going to predict the upsets, like, oh, the Lions are just now the lame duck team. By, I think they can completely win this game, but especially when you know there's going to be an upset or two, I'm taking the Rams. I got the Lions solely because I want, just want to see the Lions-Cowboys rematch. This can go 50-50 in my <sighs> opinion. I'm going Rams. I think they could upset them. I think they can too. Yep. And then part of the reason this would be a great script, script if this happened is because I do think the Eagles are going to beat the Bucks, which means we're going to have an Eagles, Cowboys, and Rams, Ooh, 49ers. Oh, round, divisional, r- fully divisional round. Oh. I mean, the 49ers dog walk the Rams, but yeah. still. Like, well, I, well, I guess the Rams kind of keep them close. They they usually play them like, closer, but I think the 49ers coming off a rest is going to be horrifying. Um, hey, listen, they're one and one this season. True. They are. That is true. Carson, Carson Wentz. Wentz. Yes, Carson sir. Wentz. Yes, sir. <laughs> that. Um, yeah, because then it'll be. I do think I, for as much, oh god, am I really about to say this? For as much shit as I talked, I still think the Eagles will beat the Bucks. I, I was shocked when I saw the line was minus one and a half for the Eagles, but I started thinking about it. And this is I'm I'm not trying I, to even the more I think about it, the less faith I have. I'm just not gonna. The think. Eagles are the Eagles are now minus three odds. They were minus one and a half the other day. Okay. As much as I hate the Eagles right now, and as much as everybody <laughs> in the city of Philadelphia wants to like destroy everyone on this team, the Buccaneers are not a good football team. The Eagles are getting Slay back. They're getting a little bit healthier. Is AJ Brown going to be? AJ Brown should be playing. Should okay. Be. Um, Smitty J- might be. Everyone's messed, like annoyed with Jalen Hurts' finger. Oh, maybe the injury. Well, so Jalen Hurts hasn't been throwing the football that well this year. I'm not really concerned about his finger being hurt. Um, and I think. They can kind of game plan the hell out of this matchup. Um, I still have this little bit of hope, but they really have been hiding their playbook. I, that I, would I be the so funniest thing. <laughs> There's no way Brian Johnson is this bad at being an OC. Dude, if he, uh, could you imagine if out of nowhere they just are firing I, all cylinders? I think there's a small chance they have definitely have something in store that's a little bit more creative. It seems like something to, Sirianni would do too. To, to, so when you're running. struggling on offense to run so little motion and things like that yeah, they, all year, it does beg the question why they aren't doing like, it. And it's not me saying they lost these games intentionally to fool everyone. I'm not saying they did that. Yeah. But I do think there's a chance that they kind of come out and run a lot of interesting looks the yeah. Bucks aren't ready for. Yeah. Um, it'll be really in- interesting. Kalijah Kansi has been having a great year. He has. Um, so it'll be very interesting on like the defensive front, how we run the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and stuff. So I'm going to take the Eagles. Same. I don't feel great about it. But, but so I'm going to be stressed. But this is also a Bucks team that beat the Panthers this week and they had to play three field goals. Yeah. Nine nothing. They beat the Carolina. Still beat them by two scores. Carolina <laughs> Carolina Panthers. Um and they played close against the Panthers the week before that as well, right? Mm-hmm. I think that wasn't a blowout game either. I'm trying to look back. I don't think they've had a divisional blowout. All their games have been close. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like the Bucks are an interesting story. I mean, shout out to Baker Mayfield for having a Tampa good year. Baker. But yeah, they beat the Buc- Panthers a second time, twenty one to eighteen. So it's not as if they are blowing out the Panthers, which are the worst team in the league. So for this matchup, I'll take the Eagles. But like I said, there's a chance mm-hmm. Chris Godwin and Mike Evans cook us and we we guess. <laughs> oh, God. But, you know, to quote Jalen Hurts, football, you know, it needs 302 percent, um, 100 100 percent body, 100 percent mind, 100 percent heart. <laughs> How much could I give? But I give till I can't. That's like, oh, no, guys. Roger's oh, mic isn't Roger's working. Mic oh, no. <laughs> Raj, your mic is cut, buddy. OK, I'll take an AI generated Hertz quote. Well, un- <laughs> unfortunately, your mic got cut. Oh, so. wow. Win, lose, touchdown. All- oh, no, Shut guys. Your mic got cut. All right. Let him cook. Let, let me cook. on. Let me get your mic. Okay. Let now, cook. let's play a game called Is This Jalen Hurts or AI? Okay. Right. Win, lose, touchdown, all that. We need more, but we give a mouse a cookie, then what? We're playing two extremes. <laughs> two extreme. Keep it real. Stay true. Main thing. Soul. No soul. You main, got nothing. Main thing is Jalen Hurts, but the mouse the cookie. You lost me yeah. there. Wandering the truth must dazzle gradually or all men go blind. <laughs> okay. So if you're ever worried about AI taking your jobs, not yet. <laughs> I kind of like this game. AI or Jalen Hurts. Oh, God. We should do it next. next second we'll do it. That'll week. be one of our next bits. But um, who's next? So that is the wild card weekend. Yeah. So we made our predictions. We'll, we spent a little bit more time on that than we'll spend on these future predictions just because we have no these idea. might yeah, not actually but, be the matchups. Yeah. But in my hypothetical scenario, the Browns would be going into Baltimore. Yeah. And I think the Browns will win that game. God, please don't hit like crack. Oh, my God. Too many good Again, lines. I'm not saying the Ravens can't win. The Ravens, the Ravens have not lost many games this year. One of them was to the Browns. Um, the Ravens are going to be on two weeks of rest. Lamar Jackson has not been a great playoff quarterback in his career, even though he's going to win an MVP. Dude, the Browns please. would theoretically, in this case, in my scenario, be rolling because they just destroyed the Texans, which I think they might do. And divisional round... Like divisional game, God, now the Joe Flacco that returns. would hit it. Joe, if playoff Joe walks back into Baltimore and beats the Ravens when they're the one seed with the what six seed Browns? Yep, five seed, five seed Browns, the team that he tormented for d- over a decade. Yep. Oh my God, that would be so good. And so I, I think it, I think it might happen. Um, I that, you know what I don't care if it doesn't happen I want that to happen yes. I don't care if it makes sense or not that's what I want Peter in your scenario too you have the Browns going to Baltimore I would still I would I would still have them going to Baltimore anyway and I still you know what whether or not they win I don't care Brown time baby let's go yeah. <laughs> go dogs go dogs um and then in my scenario I have the Dolphins they're gonna get smoked Dolphins going to Baltimore. No, it would be Houston. No, no, you, no. Oh, I've, no, no, no. I've, Houston would be the lower seed. Because yeah. yeah. Houston's yeah. four. Yep. Yeah, Houston Dolphins would be four. going to Baltimore. And I have the I have the Ravens winning that game. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. And then on the other side of the bracket, I have the Chiefs and the Bills playing again against conventional wisdom because I've gone against it. Well, for conventional wisdom, I've gone against it other times on this pick. pick. It's hard to beat a team twice. So the Kansas Are you City, going with the Chiefs? The Chiefs are going to walk oh, into my Buffalo God. and handle business. <laughs> Again, it's I'm picking against it other times, but I think it's hard to beat a team twice. Dude, oh, I mean you're oh, the Bills. The Bills going six and zero to end the year. Find it's run hard to, to it's hard to go against Spags too because he. Oh God, I don't know. And do we think there's a little bit of the maybe Eagles thing where it's like, oh, have the Chiefs opened up their full offensive playbook? Could you imagine oh, Kadarius Tony goes for like a hundred yards every? Oh no, we're gonna get the Kelsey Bowl again. Oh God! Dog, oh, dog, I can promise you, we're not getting Kelsey. <laughs> right? I'm hyping up the Eagles against the Bucks, but the Buck stops there. <laughs> <laughs> good, good fun there. Um, oh, yeah, because what? So I would have the same thing then. Because yeah, then, uh, you know what? Give me the Ford F one fifty. Give me Josh Allen. Give me the, Josh give Allen. Me the Bills. 
I mean, it's yeah. a t- I think that would be a great that that will get the prime time slot. Oh yeah, Bills and the Chiefs. 100%. Um, it'll be the first time the Chiefs are on the road in that spot. Yeah, um, which would be very interesting. Um, oh wait, no, weren't they on the road the one year? Wasn't the coin toss year? Weren't they on the road? Oh, I can't remember. Coin toss year? No. That might they might have been I don't because remember. that wasn't the AFC Championship game, right? There was the Chiefs have been in the AFC Championship. Oh no no no! Coin toss was at the Chiefs. There was a year before that, I think, that the Chiefs beat the Bills. At that Buffalo. was in Buffalo. I'm yeah. fairly certain. I'm just not concerned about the Chiefs on the road that much, so that's why I'm going to take them against Buffalo. Um, so yeah, that's me. And then in my scenario, I have Bills Texans. I have the Bills winning that. Yeah, this yep. this draft boys stop there. So <laughs> we'll, we'll keep going AFC here. I have the Browns and the Chiefs, and unfortunately. I think the Chiefs find themselves back in the Super Bowl. There's no oh way after everything you have said this year about how bad the Chiefs are. that you're just like they're going back to the Super Bowl. I've also said that the Chiefs should be the odds on favorites all year because I believe that they'll get the job done. And I think if Baltimore was there with them, it'd be different. But I, I really do believe the Browns are going to beat Baltimore. <laughs> And this could all this could all go to crap if the Texans beat the Browns uh, this weekend, and then oh the Baltimore gets to the finals. I do think if it was Baltimore Kansas City, I think Kansas City loses. But because specifically the Browns and Kansas City, I'm taking Kansas City to make it back to the Super Bowl. Again, I will I will ch- sit here and change my prediction if the Browns lose this week to the Texans. Because I do think Baltimore will then run through it. Yeah. But with the scenario presented, what I think will happen. <laughs> The Chiefs are going to find their way back to the Super Bowl despite having a really bad year by their standards. Oh my god, Raj! But you, you had the same. Oh no, scenario. I had the same thing. God damn so it! So who are you picking? <laughs> oh, so I have Browns Chiefs. <laughs> Wait, it's a re. The- oh, it's a it's a rematch yeah. of the AFC Championship uh-huh. from a couple of years ago. Are you sending the Browns to the Super Bowl with Joe Flacco? <laughs> yeah, Be that's it. why. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? <laughs> Give me playoff Joe. <laughs> Give me January Joe. I want him. <laughs> and with my delusional pick, I have Lamar having a vintage playoff moment at the first seed and losing to Josh Allen. Oh and the Bills finally go to the, the Super Bills Bowl. Bills go nine and zero to end the and year. All I'm saying God. is, I said the Bengals were going to the Super Bowl that one year, and they did. All that I'm is saying. True. Yeah, you did predict that. The AFC is my masterclass for some reason. When I guess what happened last year, I forget what happened last year. Oh, you had the Eagles winning, I think. Yeah, last year uh, I said the AFC was my masterclass. I never said anything about the NFC. The NFC, I've usually been wrong about. So you've got Bills playing the Ravens. uh, Bills win that, and then we've got Browns Chiefs. I got the Chiefs winning that. You got the Browns. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> I can't believe I just said the, that. The Browns and Chiefs are an interesting matchup. That would be a really fun yeah. game. Um, Good lord! I think the AFC is Baltimore. Just, you better just make this a normal. Uh, uh, do I want a normal playoff? Not really. Yeah. Actually, you know what? No, Baltimore. You can lose. Yeah. Sorry, I, Lamar. I, it's, there's a lot of storylines that are interesting in the AFC, <laughs> like the Dolphins' potential. The Chiefs are not playing well, but they've got a great defense and a great quarterback. And uh. then. Like the Browns are like the unknown with Joe Flacco. Is it just yeah. a fluke? And then you've got the Bills who are keep winning the games but not by a lot and then you got the ravens who lamar's been bad in the playoffs so you don't really know even though he's really good so there's so many question marks in the afc yep. champ like playoffs i could just see a scenario kind of like raj presented where the two seed bills get through the ravens get through ravens go and you're like wow that was really not exciting but also i think it could get a little messy like kind of my scenario yeah mm-hmm. so then on the nfc i feel like we're gonna all have a similar conclusion in my scenario it'd be 49ers playing the Rams and then Eagles playing the Cowboys. I would have the Cowboys winning against the Eagles, yeah. which would stink so bad. Like I'd be so upset. We we're, to be the team that sends the Cowboys to the conference championship game is going to hurt, but our team is cooked. I, that's why you kind of got to hope you don't get into that game. I know. Right, I just right. said it's hard to beat a team twice, and that's why I took the Chiefs, but the Eagles got destroyed in Dallas. This will be three times, too. Yeah. This will be the third matchup this year. Yeah, and it, the last time the Eagles went into Dallas, they got cooked. They're also like just the way they're playing. They just have mm-hmm. no momentum. Yeah. Like, now this is a sneaky spot where the Eagles could write the ship. 
They, they open up the playbook. They yeah. turn to page two. <laughs> they get a little bit of momentum coming off the box. And suddenly, Reed is an all pro safety. Yeah, suddenly. I mean, He's not getting torched by Darius this, Slayton. Reed, Blake, and Shipper and Reed. Happened, this game right here is an opportunity for the Eagles to stop all the negative talk for the year. And oh, say, yeah. We made it back to the NFC Championship, beating our division rival. Yeah. That's, that's a spot for that. They could shut everybody yeah. up, but they won't. They won't. Nope. Yeah. So the Cowboys will go to the NFC Championship game, playing the 49ers, who are going to They're gonna be the Rams, walk like, over whatever. the Rams. Yeah. And then the 49ers are going to do exactly what they did to the Cowboys. They're going to pants them. And pants them. Yeah. <laughs> and they're going to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Where, in my scenario, the 49ers will win the Super Bowl and become the 2023, <sighs> 2024 NFL yeah. champions. I, I kind of got... I, the you, NFC is a lot less interesting. You had the same, you had yeah. the same scenarios as me. Yeah, because, okay. I mean, the NFC is a lot less interesting just, just because of, like, how good the 49ers are. Because, like, they went on the skid. They did. But then they really came right back the in their own. The skid was short-lived. The skid was short-lived. The only team that I could see beating them would be Baltimore. And if Baltimore somehow doesn't make it because of some random crap in the, the AFC side, yeah. then it's over. Yeah, Baltimore yeah. is the team. Yeah. But they could lose. And then if they're not the team, then what? Like what? there's so many other teams that are just log mm-hmm. jammed. Like I would say it's the Ravens at the top, and then it's just a whole line of like, Bills, Chiefs, like Browns, maybe is like the next tier. Those yep. three, and then you've got a little bit of tier underneath. But I mean, the Chiefs could just lose in round one because yeah. they haven't been playing well. So I have Browns, Forty Nine, yeah, Forty Nine ers win. Oh, okay. Sorry. So you think the Eagles are losing, and then yeah, mm-hmm. okay. So we got it's it's like the same thing because it's, it's like it's a lot more predictable. I feel like just because like we Which literally Browns? have seen those teams. I do think the Browns Forty Nine ers would be interesting. That would be a really good Super Bowl in terms one. of. Like how the Browns play defense because it's two really good defenses. Like a lot of man yeah. coverage for a quarterback that we don't know if it's dynamic and Brock Purdy a big spot. It'd be an interesting game. It would be. A, I think because of how good both defenses would be, it would then be pushed on the offenses to be creative and yeah. figure something out. I so. just wonder if that's where Joe Flacco is like January Joe. I guess that'd be February, February Joe. Joe. But is February Joe there? Is this? <laughs> If this kind of like Joe 30, Biden, where you just hit the end of the yeah, end of the road a yeah, little bit, just finally yeah. crashed. Yeah. Or, I mean, look, if this dude, maybe he's going to talk to Aaron Rodgers and take whatever ashwagandha yeah. or ayahuasca, whatever the hell, and be, turn into a demon in January. I don't know, but that would be all right. So 49ers, Browns, 49ers, pull it out. 49ers, and then Raj. So in my scenario, I have Cowboys playing the Lions, and I have the Eagles playing the Chiefs. Oh, bleh, wow, 49ers. Oh. So. I have the Lions being the Cowboys. Dan, oh, Dan, that'd be Dan, hilarious. Dan game, Campbell gets his revenge. That game is I want the Eagles to win, but that game is a situation. Well, they could they could win and still play the uh, 49ers like your scenario. Mm-hmm. But that's Rams Lions at Cowboys. Sorry, yeah. Cowboys Lions at Cowboys after what just happened with the rest is a super fascinating. Mm-hmm. If that rematch matchup. happens, that'd be ridiculous. I would say actually, like I'd rather the Eagles play the 49. Cause I don't think the Eagles are going far anyway. So I would rather the lions and Cowboys play just because I want to That'd see be that, so cool. The storylines, everything like oh they run the, the play Eagles again. The, Honestly, the, dude, the, could you imagine? I mean, they ran the, against we in week 18. They yeah, ran, they, ran they had it. Decker report. Yeah. They had Decker report as eligible again. Yeah. That's hilarious. So, yeah. So I think, I think your scenario is just fascinating. Have the Lions go yeah. back into Dallas to be like that last matchup, fluky. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then yeah, I have the 49ers steamrolling us. Yeah, and then after that, then I have the 49ers being the Lions. Okay, that's what. The, and then I have 49ers Bills. This is where I am going to be very delusional. I think this the is Bills. I think I have the Bills winning. Oh <laughs> my god! There's no rhyme, no reason to this. I just think. This after everything that has happened this season, I think Brock Purdy and the 49ers finally they they meet their match. They meet their match, I think, cuz you have Josh Allen who will just do anything and that one game he'll finally do everything right. <laughs> Say it to the camera. Who do you have winning the Super Bowl against who? I have the Bills beating the 49ers in the Super Bowl. Dude. And this is me being... This is not my delusional one. My delusional one's the Eagles winning. Oh, my God. The, my delusional one's the Eagles be- beating the Bills. Oh, my God. In the Whatever. Super Bowl. I mean, I could... Listen, I mean, the Bills are an interesting team just because of their record against... And how teams. much momentum they have. Mm-hmm. Yep. They'll have to get... Josh Allen playing good, but I mean five and one against playoff teams, that's legit. Did yes. you have the Chiefs in the Super Bowl last year? 
Um, I don't remember. I think I did. If you go three for three in Super Bowl predictions, I di- I didn't go through. No, no, no. I get. I'm. I, I think I'm two for two in AFC. I think. Yeah, I, you're two for two. In I AFC. think I had the Chiefs. You got a shot at going three for three in. I think you did. Yeah, I did have the Chiefs. Yeah, because I don't it was, think we made these predictions on the podcast. I don't remember what. I think I had the Kelsey Bowl because I was sitting there yeah. we were making predictions. I was like, do I want to see the Kelsey Bowl or do I want to see Joe Shiesty versus yeah. Jalen? But I was like, I think the Kelsey Bowl. Yeah. Good Lord. What's your like, what if scenario of the playoffs? Like if this thing happens. If Baltimore loses, it's going to be chaos. Yeah. that's It's right. anybody's game. My what if is what if Jordan Love place, replaces Aaron Rodgers this year, walks into Dallas. What carnage would ensue. I mean, not only would it just Dallas would burn to the ground. I yeah, think. I know. Or sorry, Arlington. That's why they. That's like my scenario where I think a lot of other matchups they lose. You're like, oh, like if, even if the Dolphins beat the Chiefs, it's like, well, the Chiefs weren't playing that well. Yeah, the Dolphins' yeah, electric yeah. offense, like yeah. it happened. A lot of uh, Steelers <laughs> beat the Bills. Yeah. Well, Josh Allen self imploded. They were playing six and zero football. It was due. Yeah, and the Bills just had like an up and down year. Like that's how it ends. My what but, if is what if the Steelers beat the Bills? Shut up. <laughs> Shut your mouth. I mean, that's, yeah, Will that's, Mason that's, Rudolph be the starter next year? Oh, God. oh gosh. Apparently, Russ might go to the, come Dude, to Pittsburgh. Just, uh, just, who knows? Stop listening to Steelers fans. You're right. <laughs> they just start but talking. <laughs> my, like, if the Cowboys, not only would it just make the bracket super interesting, yeah. but it would just be a oh complete, like this is supposed to be their year. But if they if they were going to win the Super Bowl, this would be it. Yep. Yeah. And if the, I don't think, again, I don't think it'll happen, but that would be the biggest, Dude, like, it would be so, it would blow so up. funny. Jordan Love, I am begging you. Do you have the opportunity to do the funniest thing you have ever done in your life? And people, I would watch the game because I think Matt LaFleur is going to do a lot of interesting offensive things to try to get that team to put up points. I'm not sure that's going to work, but I, I think you can see a lot of very interesting plays to go, to go on. Um, gosh. It would be, I would sacrifice the Eagles losing to the Bucks just because I don't think they're going far for the Packers to walk into in Dallas the- and win. Oh my God. But Bucks is a second round playoff team. So then you'd have the 49ers <laughs> against the Bucks. You know, it would be 49ers, Packers versus Bucks and the winner of oh, the Lions and no. Friends game. Dude. It's the annual 49ers versus Green Bay playoff <laughs> <laughs> disaster class. <laughs> Oh, Jordan loved the Packers was I like 40. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, but yeah, Good those Lord. are our predictions. So I'm so excited for these playoffs. I'm I'm, ex- I'm excited as well. Um there's a lot of inter- like I mean if we just go through real quick the week 1 storylines. It's Joe Flacco and the rookie led mm. Texans. It's an interesting game 4-5. Stafford Tyree kill returned to Kansas, Kansas City. City. Stafford back to Detroit. Stafford, Stafford back, back to, to Detroit. Detroit. Even I think Bill Steelers is like the least interesting, but even then it's like Josh Allen could implode. Yeah. Like you just don't know. Packers, Cowboys, two historic franchises. Are the Eagles going to the bed? And I, yeah, I think. <laughs> Des didn't catch it. I would say if you want to say any games, like the two boring games, Steelers, Bills, Eagles, Bucks, sure. The Eagles, Bucks, I think is an interesting game. And some people are wondering why they got Monday night. I think it's interesting because. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't like this is the Super Bowl representative from the NFC next year having to play a game against Bucks who aren't good on the road, you're just wondering: Can we see any shred of a Super Bowl team? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I think we might see a shred. All because right, you got the play, Their playbook was three plays big all year, and then they went They're to flipped. page four. Yep. <laughs> We're very delusional guys. God, but could you see it? Like, if there's any guy to do it. It's Nick Sirianni. <laughs> good lord. Well, that announcement at Monday at 11.45 p.m. saying the Eagles thank have relieved fans. Nick Sirianni of his head coaching duties and the thank you fans post the is going to go crazy. Post. The thank you fans post is going to hit like crack from the CIA in the yeah. 80s. Oh, God. Well, boys, great pod. As <laughs> When's always, baseball season? <laughs> it's been, uh, this will be an interesting playoff. I will be back here next Tuesday when we're recording, probably released on Wednesday to break down what kind of happened in the playoffs and then make our next round predictions. Uh, I can't wait to start screaming about that. It'll be a, it'll be a fun one. There's a gosh. NFL is so back, baby. It's so yes, back. Sir. It's so back. If you've gotten this far in the podcast, please like comment, subscribe. It helps the algorithm a lot. Um, and yeah, make sure you comment on our Instagram clips. Yeah. If you want to be featured in the next episode, or if you don't want to be featured, I wouldn't comment. Just make some people mad in the comments. Please yeah. comment. I like responding. Just, just start saying things. Why we'll see, not? We'll see you next time. <laughs>